At IGS, our mission is to bring tasty, nutritious food to all areas of the world who need it. The growth towers are automated machines based on industrial automation. This technology is built on, on building blocks to, to make it simple. So we have the automation, we have the machine, we have the lighting, we have the environment, we have the uh, watering and we have the, the safety and then the, the big data AI on, on top. Because we are in a phase where we are um, scaling up and this product is evolving and growing and we're bringing in more and more data and more and more sensors and more and more complicated things into our system all the time. It's not just about monitoring what we have. It's about when something goes wrong, being able to identify where it's gone wrong across our entire stack. Is it a sensor that's gone down? Is it in the firmware? Is it in, our, in the software? And being able to do that retrospectively is really important as well. The implementation phase was really easy for us actually. Um, we were expecting quite a bit of pain to have to go through and implement the code manually. Um, instead, what we found was for about 90% of what we were doing, it was just a case of adding the APM agent into the container, and that was it. it all in all, we had most of our estate instrumented within about a day and a half. The nature of our infrastructure is we have lots of microservices um, and we have multiple environments with lots of microservices, which ultimately means we have lots of different systems generating a lot of logs. The historic way of uh, us looking at that was to actually just get the logs from the pod directly or to try and mangle that, that insight. So for us, um, a huge benefit recently has been making use of logs in context. So the ability to actually link up what a service is, what the developers view it as, being able to kind of know where that sits in the estate and then view the logs for that in the context of its interaction with the other services in our estate. And that's been a big, big part of our kind of success recently is we use logging quite heavily, but we've been able to tie it all together into a single view. Having a guarantee about what our performance is going to look like is really important to us. So what New Relic has allowed us to do is shift a lot of that left so that when we're in our, in our development pipelines and in our staging pipelines, we can say, yes, we, we have confidence that, that the software is going to perform and we can load test and we can do all of those things and know that we have confidence in it. Our actual mean time for recovery has gone down significantly. So it allows us to identify what's happened quicker, where it's happened in the code and what the impact on that is going to be elsewhere. Outside of that, we've also been able to do a lot more proactive monitoring as well, so preventing things before the issue is even occurring. So we can see if there's been a performance degradation, we can see if there's been an increase in errors which could indicate some underlying instability. And we're then able to tie that together with the actual infrastructure monitoring from the new Relic integrations of Azul and Kubernetes. The biggest thing around scaling is that the monitoring side of it has become a non-issue for us as far as that goes. So we can now focus on areas which actually deliver value to our customers or to the development team as opposed to needing to keep people assigned to work on the monitoring and observability platform. The new Relic has also had a big impact on our budget and our month-to-month -month spend. So prior to adopting new Relic, we were spending somewhere in regions of 20 to 24,000 pounds a month on our logging and monitoring capability. I think we're down to about eight to 10 at this moment in time. So it's been overall freed up a lot of resources, but also fed directly into what our value proposition is to customers as well. So this industry and technology is truly agile. We are changing things all the time. Um, New Relic really helps with what we would think is click to crash. So we do have the occasional problems, but that's not a bad thing. As long as we can fix it very, very quickly, that gives us the confidence to change many things at once. And that allows us to take more risks and innovate faster uh, with a live product.